Welcome to WO50 Podcast, Women Over 50 in Body Wisdom and Wellness. Hello there. My name is Corinne, and I'm here with my dear friend, my BFF, Eddie. And today we talked about our morning routines. Eddie and I shared our morning routines, and we actually got into our night routines too. Hey, Ed? We did. We touched on them, and we, we talked about not letting ourselves be an afterthought. Right. We just <laughs> set up our, you know, set up our morning routines, get it going in the morning and, you know, get the, the brisk walk in, eat the real food, have the sunshine, kind of like that. But we kind of talked about lots of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. If you have a problem with mornings or if you need a good morning routine or if you need support with your morning routine or new ideas, then this is your podcast. We hope you enjoy it. Hi, Hi Ken. <laughs> <laughs> Same time. Same time. Uh huh. I'm wearing a what's this? What cuts this color called? Royal blue. It's like a purple. Yeah, purpley not, blue. Yeah, looks great on you. That was your one of your Christmas presents I sent. Was it this year Christmas present? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember? Yeah. It's very soft. Yes, it is soft, very very nice. Very lovely. It's good color on you. I have my baby blue. Yeah, you got your baby turtleneck. Uh Uh-huh. A little chilly up there, huh? It's a bit chilly, but you know, it's good cross-country skiing weather. Uh Uh-huh. You go for it. You enjoy that. I love it. I feel so fresh. And you know, it I just added it into my morning routine. (laughs) Did you really? Or are you just saying that to get into our topic? Because (laughs) No, I did because the weather is now lovely for outdoor winter sports. But you don't do it in the morning before you go to work. Well, on the days that I'm not going into the office, I do. So we go out in the morning and on the days I work, we do it in the evening. We don't ski in the evening. Mm -hmm. As long as it doesn't rain or ice up or, you know, there's, it's, it's day to day. It's present moment living here. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. So we decided to talk about morning routines. We actually did record this very early on, but we didn't like publish our first three or four episodes because it was just like practicing and, and, and yes. remembered that that was one of our topics and it's such an important topic in what your morning routine is. And oh, I've yes. always felt, you know, your mornings are how you set up your day. And mornings have always been very important to me because I'm not a big morning lover. Like I, I go slow in the morning. Like I remember when I was in high school, the reason why I couldn't wait to graduate is because I couldn't wait to not have to get up when somebody else wanted me to get up. And I've kind of like spent my whole life not having to get up until I wanted to get up, which is such a luxury and lovely thing because I I don't like waking up really early when my body does not ready to get up. Oh, well, that's a good thing to honor. You know, your sleep is really important because you want to go through your whole sleep cycle. You know, your dishwasher doesn't like to be shut off in the middle either of its program. (laughs) So (laughs) that's what, that's my new, I always have these new little things. So I'm like, okay, you have a sleep cycle to get through and all the studies now, you know me, I'm always reading up on the science and what's going on and as you are. And we don't want to go into a second sleep cycle. That's why we don't want to hit the snooze button over and over and over because we keep dropping into a deep sleep, waking up out of it. So that it's sleep all- cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. It's also yeah, that sleep cycle when we're, yeah, we're, we're resting, we go into REM, we're awake, we go, you know, the deep sleep is the beginning of the sleep cycle and then we kind of wake up. So allowing your body to wake up naturally is great. But again, if you have to get up by a clock, which some people do, um, don't hit the snooze button, get up. That's your, you know, new morning routine for me. Cause sometimes I, I did, I did like to hit the snooze button. Cause I love getting that little bit of extra sleep. I mean, that's and torture to me. That's absolute torture to me to, to hit a snooze button and lay back down because waking up to yeah. me the first time I wake up is torture enough. And if I hit yeah. the snooze and go back to sleep, then I have to do it again. <laughs> so I've never been a snooze button person. It's also waking up to me, procrastinating first thing in the morning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now that we know like the studies and everything on it, it isn't, it, it is not good at all for you to do. You, you want to complete your sleep cycle, get up and then really 
honor yourself. Like you get up and you honor yourself. It's your morning. It's your time to do what you want to do. Like I'm really great with keeping my cell phone way over, you know, away from me. But, you know, I've gone through times, habits where you wake up and you pick up your cell phone and you look at your appointment schedule or, you know, you scroll something and then the morning's gone from you. That's it. Somebody else got your morning. Somebody on FaceTime or you read a story or you, you know, something was scripted on the screen or no, spend that morning time like to get up and, and do our our me time. The, the, like So I've gotten into this 10 to 15 minutes of when I get up, I do my meditation. So I'm, I've gotten, you'll be happy to hear that because you're really good at that. You get up and then you brush your teeth and pee and whatever you need to do. And then you sit and you meditate. And now I do that and I get my meditation and then I do my stretches and my yoga and, you know, and then my other little routine things, but I don't touch my phone for at least an hour, mm -hmm. at least. So it's like, but then on, you know, I got to get to work. So you have to pick up your phone, but on the days I'm off, I'm really pushing the, the phone aside and get outside and, so, you know, we get a routine going, but depending on your schedule, you know, yeah, it can change a little bit. But the little bit of time for you in the morning, whether it's a lot of time or a little bit of time, it's got to be for you, right? Me. I, we need that. And then we're really delighted. We're really like, wow, I gave me that time. Yeah, I gave me that time. And it also leaves room for inspiration about your day instead of looking at your schedule of what you have scheduled it leaves time for inspiration of what do you feel to do today if you've got some flexibility in there and that's what it you know one of the things I love about my mornings is yes I get up and meditate actually before I brush my teeth I meditate and I and then I do my and then I might brush my teeth and then I do my yoga routine. Then I will touch my phone to listen to podcasts because I listen to podcasts while I do my makeup and my hair in the morning. Um, but I won't like, you know, return text messages because I I just, you know, I actually don't return messages usually until 10 or 11 a.m. when I've been up for three hours already. And um, but yeah, to me, it just leaves room to really feel into the day as to what I'm feeling. So people will have a couple, a cup of coffee or tea, you know, in the morning. So don't you go downstairs and yeah. get your coffee immediately? Well, well sometimes it's coffee or tea. It's one or the other. Yeah. I think it's you the ritual. Of making... Um, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. Yeah. Some people yeah. do that. That's I'm just, well, you know, I don't, I stay upstairs and I don't get co tea because I don't drink coffee. I don't get my tea until 11 or 12. And so yeah. I just stay upstairs and I don't, you know, I'll maybe drink a little bit of water and I'll take a probiotic, mm -hmm. you know, something like that, but I won't do any tea at all. And so, yes. but even the time what you're drinking tea, you know, some people like to drink their coffee or tea and, you know, read the newspaper. That's a big thing for a lot of people. Hopefully it's an actual paper rather than scrolling through, mm -hmm. but, you know, some people do like the news um, in the morning, but, you know, whatever it is to do it, like, mindfully and enjoy it like you really enjoy going downstairs and hitting that machine that ritual for you yes. like that's a ritual that just you know brings you present wake wakes you up in a nice way well even if it's decaffeinated it's it's um the the coffee or the tea that i make it's it is a ritual and you go down and you make it in your digestive system it's warming and you know whether it's great for your bowels and it gets you eliminating you know which works for for me and also a lot of other people but it is that kind of um like i don't know it's it is uh, my i got my microbiome conditioned you know they're like in there waiting their little faces oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it is, it is a kind of a ritual and, 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 you know, it is part of a me time. Yeah. You know, it's a, I think it's really important that we do that. We, we, a lot of times, you know, I speak to a lot of people who've lost themselves in the morning. They go, I can't believe it. Like, I don't even remember what I've done all day and the day is gone. Yeah. But when we have that little time in the morning and then if we can do it again in the afternoon, Again, it's those pauses, right, which we talked about on one of our other podcasts. Those pauses allow us to kind of sit back and 
reflect and the and day feel doesn't into what's next instead of instead of I mean sometimes like I said we do have to schedule things and follow through we've scheduled with something with somebody or you know whatever it is but sometimes it's nice just to kind of feel into your day to see what your feet what you're feeling into and what you feel to do and what what is you know our intuition I feel like you know I really value my intuition my friend today so I took my friend to the airport this morning at 11 and I went this you know Briley Parkway way around like it's the long way around but it's really nice and picturesque and then after I dropped her off I'm like oh I'm excited to get back home to do a few things before I see my clients so I took the the highway instead and as soon as I passed Briley the last day it was dead stop traffic like oh, dead wow. stop. And it took 40 minutes to get home instead of 15 minutes. Cause the, we, I, we still don't know why 24 was shut down completely. So anyway, I text my friend, Kathy and said, I've got stuck. Um, and she's like, Oh my gosh. She said, I've been telling my family all morning that somebody that I know, but she didn't have any idea I was going to the airport. She goes, somebody needs to know that the traffic shut down. I saw it on the news and somebody's going to the airport. I just don't know who it is. <laughs> I said, well, it was me. Yeah. So listening to your intuition, having that time, and Kathy does meditate every day in the morning and creating that space to feel into intuition or your schedule or listening to your partner more. I was listening to a podcast the other day. It was actually at the actor, Paul Giamatti. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful actor. He has this podcast called Chinwag and they talk about clairvoyance and psychics and stuff. And they, he he's with another friend of his who's a professor and they just do it like on the psychological aspect of why people believe it, you know, all these different, and, and he is so, he's a wonderful actor and he's a great speaker, but he is not a good listener. Oh. And like they interviewed Tom Hanks and Tom Hanks listened to everything and responded to everything. And he even commented how, what a good listener he, he is. And so many times Paul's other podcast person will say something and Paul will interrupt and they'll never go back to what his friend said. And so, so, you know, and some people are like that and, and it's not like they're not doing it on purpose. To me, it's a mindful aware thing. It's like when you, cause you do sometimes being a good listener is sort of a learned thing. You know, you can't just expect everybody to be a good listener. It's kind of what I do for a living. And I'm, I'm feel like my dominant sense is hearing. So I do love tuning in and hearing but just like Eddie's talent, like Eddie's takes in your eyesight is unbelievable. You take everything in visually. Well, I can't tell you every single time we're walking down the street or driving, driving together, you'll see 10 things. Did you see that? No. Did you see that? Did you see? I can't believe you missed that Corinne. And I'm like, no, I didn't see. I'm not. My dominant sense is not visual. Mm -hmm. And, and it's kind of the same thing with, with, with hearing. It's like, I'm tuned into hearing, she tunes into seeing. So we all sort of have this dominant sense, but the more sort of time that we spend and at time in the morning, it does set up your day. It does. And it, it's interesting because listening for me, I grew up in a family where, you know, if you took a breath, you lost your place in line at the table because they got the conversation now, you know, of talking over each other. And there's a lot of families like Newfoundland, everybody wants to chat and talk and they're friendly and sweet and everything. But a lot of times listening is a learned behavior. It's it, we have to sit like I've had to practice that. And even in my own, you know, career in medicine, I've that's that's been a big uh yeah big field for me to dive into to just listen because and also when you're wanting to give advice to somebody and I kind of know where they're going you know they're I'm trying I'm wanting to finish the sentence and I know what they're going to say you know I have this pain and it's it's it start I says it's your head it's in, in your head yeah it's in your head. <laughs> no so I've gotten really 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 good but you know that years comes you know practice and same with you I mean remember how much you, you know we would uh, we'd see each other and then I would have a hundred years caught up in you know two hours with you and you're like oh my god I'm so exhausted <laughs> <laughs> and that's because there's so much to say right but now I feel less words is you know just yeah yeah I like to listen more actually these yeah, days you do. Mm -hmm. yeah, you do. yeah and there was a time when I wasn't a good listener 
You know, I don't think that that was my dominant sense when I was young, for sure. And it's just something that has gr I've grown into. And I appreciate that about myself. And, um, and it serves me well in, in what I do. And I really enjoy even just sitting next to somebody on the plane, tuning in and listening to them. You know, I love sitting on the plane and meditating and not talking to anybody, even for 10 out on a 10 hour flight to India or actually 14 hours, but um, from, from London to India is 14 hours. But, um, but I can also would enjoy, you know, talking and, and listening to people's story as well. And, and sometimes there's a good conversation to be had and sometimes, you know, just idle chatter when, when we want to meditate it's yeah. So it's yeah. knowing what you want and you are a good listener. You're a great listener, actually. That's why your life coach work is uh, wonderful, you know, for people. Thank you. Yeah. I enjoy it. I enjoy it. And I think we're, we're usually good at things we really enjoy, you know? Yeah. Things yeah. And I find with the habits, like the, the personal things we do in the morning, I have always, since I can remember, as soon as I got out of the bed, it was made. I pulled my blankets and, and straightened my pillows right away. Yeah, me too. And, and, and if you think about it, that's one thing you got done for the day, right? And I always love to come into my room where it was tidy. You know, I never go to bed with my clothes on the floor. Like, that's just me. I, I have, I like my, my bedroom to be tidy and it's my oasis and the pillows and, you know, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The bed in the morning is a big, the bed made in the morning is a big deal for me. Like I, I really enjoy, cause there was a time when I was younger when I didn't enjoy making the bed, but, but you know, the last 30 years at least or so, I just really enjoyed. I love my bed. I love my blankets and pillows on my bed. I, you know, and, um, and, and I, and it's really like you, it's like when I walk in from the bathroom after washing my face to see my bed clean, it's like, it's so nice. It's like, and I've accomplished something already today. Like our brains yeah. are looking for accomplishment. Did I talk about in the last podcast about the infinite scrolling? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah so but, but say that again, that's really a good point. Really important. Can... And I brought it up at a, at a dinner I had with some people the other night too. So there, Trevor Noah was talking to the guy that invented infinite scrolling which is, you know, when, when you used to go on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram, there used to be the bottom of the page, you had to wait for it to load. Mm -hmm. And and then it, so our brains are constantly looking for a conclusion to something. So we, that's how our brains work. So when you scroll, if there's infinite scrolling, which is what they have now, and there's no conclusion, mm -hmm. your brain is never satisfied. So that's why you'll keep scrolling. So it's just so interesting, just even you being aware of that when you yeah. start and just give yourself a time, like now the iPhones, I think somebody was telling me that you can actually put a timer and when you've been on the phone a certain amount of time, it'll shut off and wow, that's tell you you've been, been on long enough if you, you know. Well, it's, it's going down the rabbit hole, you know, you get, you pick up your phone and, and you're going to get caught up into something. There's so much on there. Something's going to grab your interest, mm -hmm. you know. First thing in the morning, last thing at night, we shouldn't be scrolling. No, no. And it's a habit. And I know it's a fun habit. Like yeah. I used to love watching, you know, funny things before I went to sleep. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I try not to do that at all. Like I try to be, I do like to watch TV before I go to sleep. That's, you oh, know, yeah. more Me than too. reading actually um, these days or what actually, and then when I'm going to sleep, I'll listen to usually an audible book, but usually something really relaxing like Adi Ashanti or Eckhart Tolle that puts me to sleep. Mm -hmm. I don't have to have that to sleep, but sometimes I enjoy it. And it's better than going to sleep after I watch, you know, an episode sort of suits or something like that. Well, that's the thing. Everybody's got a, a different way of, of kind of, of getting into your good sleep hygiene. You know, we know, sometimes we know as soon as Netflix comes on, oh, in a couple of hours, it's going to be time to go to bed or an hour. And yeah. then we get to bed at that certain time and we get in and either we listen to Adi and or I'll pick up the book. I usually have three or four books on my table. Yeah. If I'm not really, really sleepy, I'm going to read something that I'm really interested in. But then I get really tired really quick because it's taken so much attention, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and yeah. yeah, and it's the end of the day and my brain wants to rest and that's just me. I have to kind of, you know, 
<laughs> move out of the default network and, and put attention. And then the attention exhausts me. <laughs> and then do you, what time do you start heading to bed? And what time do you actually turn off the light? Do you have a certain time? So, so around 1130, the light's out. So around 1030 ish, I'm, I'm in the room calming down it takes me, you know, anywhere from half hour to an hour to, but I want to be asleep by 1130. That's why sometimes you'll see a little text come in from me and I'll, I'm thinking of you or we've just finished talking earlier or something and I'll say good night. <laughs> and then you might respond, but I don't see it till the next day. Yeah. Sometime. And I know once you say good night, you're, you're gone. Oh Except for sometimes you go to a little bit later. I mean, we talk about I do, in the morning. Yeah. When you're not working the next day or on the weekend and yeah. stuff, you go to bed a little bit later. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be 1130 or 12. So, you know, but definitely my morning is about the same. I'm usually up around 738. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Definitely. If I want to sleep in, it'll go to 830. But um, I, I like I like to get my whole day in. You know, I love to get my whole day. And um, I find if we're if we're taking the time to meditate or reflect quiet time, be in nature, you know, do something, some type of exercise sometime during the day, learn something, work on something that we're trying to complete. Like I have projects, painting or writing a song or writing a book or completing a, 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 a session of something. And if I put a little bit of time in on even one of those a day, I feel like I'm like Mel Robbins says, you're moving the football down the field. And you know how how they get a touchdown. It's a little, just keep moving the ball down the field. And that's kind of, kind of, you know, a little bit of a um, mindset for me these days is to do the little bits. And I'm, I'm feeling really good because they add up at the end, right? You really yeah. progress to complete something. So mm -hmm. just like our podcast, it's like, yeah. You know, by being consistent with it and connecting at least once a week. And if we miss a week, then we'll do maybe a double, you know, yeah. a double one to try to keep consistent. Then all of a sudden after four months, you know, we've got like 10 episodes or 15 or something like that. Absolutely. And I'm looking at all of them and it really, when I scroll down through all the WO50 podcasts and I'm going, wow, we've done all those, you know, you don't realize when you go back, it's like chapters in a book. It's really yeah. beautiful. It's really cool. And that's what consistency does because our, our lives can go by without being committed and consistent to something. And all of a sudden that's what can cause a little bit of, you know, anxiety and depression is like life is going by and I'm not doing what I want to do. And so more, your morning can help you with that, whether it's journaling that you want to do or a little bit of reading. I mean, there's a lot of different options. One of the first things I do when I coach people is talk about what their morning routine is. How do they start their day? Because how you start your day sets up your day and that's your days set up, your, make your week, your week mm -hmm. makes your month, your month makes your years. So how you start your mornings kind of sets up your year. Yeah. And, and how you set up your morning, if you've given this much time to yourself and by the end of the year, you've given that amount of time to yourself, you should be really good at some the things you pick to do in the morning. Yeah. Right. Whether it's, you know, I, I said this to a guy the other day and he says, you know, I just don't get out much. And I said, you have a dog. He goes, yeah. He said, I feel bad because I don't have the energy to go out. And I said, well, that's what we have to change first. Your motivation, your energy. Let's figure out why that's an issue. But here's what I want you to do. And I gave him a list of things and it's unbelievable. He said, that's all I needed was the to-do list. And he said, and not that it's a to-do list, it's my morning. It's, I can do this in the morning. He said, but by the time I get home, I'm exhausted and the dog's looking at me and nobody gets any good out of me. So if we get those things done in the morning, we're getting a lot of good in. Even the dog's happy, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can even high five yourself, you know, going out the door, like, like just be kind to yourself and, and. I've, I've worked on that so much over the years of being so disappointed of not finishing something and, oh, I had that, that was a plan or that was a resolution and, you know, it, it just, yeah, plan spams, you know, give them up, just 
see what you want to do. Break down what you want to do, whether it's a goal and or it, it, if it becomes a plan. Okay, but. But how it, you start your morning is, is, you know, then you can write your plan because when in the morning, if you've got space in your morning, then you, you might start writing your plan that way, like journaling or whatever you, if you never take, if you hit the ground, I mean, I think about that when I'm driving down the street and I see people like smoking a cigarette and drinking coffee, driving in the car, and you know that they just jumped out of bed and started their day like that. And that's makes up their day, what makes up their week, makes up their month, you know, and uh, it, it, it's, it's also it, when you accomplish, like even what Eddie and I were talking about is making your bed in the morning, little accomplishments, like you pat yourself on the back in your mind, you feel good. And then you feel more confident um, to do the next thing. Like one of the Tony Robbins, when I studied with him, one of his main things to get people unstuck is to have them do something that they're afraid of, or that's really challenging for them. Just one thing. And mm -hmm. when they see themselves do that it it, ra it it raises their confidence uh to be able to do the next thing you know and so so the morning routine is kind of like that when you have morning routine that you commit to mm -hmm. and it starts to work in your life then you again you just feel proud of yourself and confident to make you know better decisions for everything in your life for the goals that you want to take or or the vacation that you want to do or whatever or the relationship that you want to work on whatever it is you know not that you have to not that you have to like accomplish things because everybody's different like I find even bettering a relationship is an accomplishment like and humans do need that meaning that progress your brain is actually made for that yes just and just a little bit of progress, any any little movement, whatever it is, it's movement. It's going in the right direction, and it is whether it's a dopamine hit or it's a a really good feeling. You know, I was like, oh, I got that done today. I'm so glad I did that. I, I you know, I fitted it in then. Like the morning, if it's really icky out, like I must say, my honey, he'll every single morning, he. The two of us, like since January, this month has come in, we we are really strict now with our morning routines. So we've gotten re like really good now. But he does the, the walk. He'll get out and do that brisk walk, right, which a lot of people recommend, which is great. And if it's too icy out, I'm not doing the brisk walk. I'm upstairs doing my five rights yoga or I'm adding in a little bit of hatha or whatever planks, whatever it is to get my heart rate up a little bit. So I, I laugh because I say to him, I said, you got a brisk walk, you know, like an hour in that age group where you got to walk like, you know, it, the roads are going to freeze in the next 10 minutes. You got to get it done really fast <laughs> and get back in. That's a brisk walk because people ask me, what is a brisk walk? Like, is that just like you swing your arms or no, you're walking like your pants is on fire. Like <laughs> or you're trying to keep up with your mom, my mom and my sister. Of course, my mom, not so much now because she's 84, but I mean, she didn't slow down till about five or six years ago. And my sister, they're both such fast walkers. So all I have to do is walk like I'm trying to catch up with them. And they're both have little legs, just like I do, you know, and like, I'm trying to get, like, I went on a couple of walks with my, for my sister over the holidays and man, it was like, it was like almost a run and she is a runner too. So, um, yeah, yeah, get definitely get your heart rate up. And these days I like my trampoline because I'm a I'm a fair yeah. weather walker. It has to be like between, you know, 50 and 85 mm -hmm. degrees with no humidity and no rain for oh, me yeah. to want to go out and hike and walk and stuff. So and that's a fine. That's just I mean, I will go out, you know, like I don't enjoy jumping out of bed and not doing any, you know, I always meditate, but like and do my yoga practice, but I like my morning slow. But when I'm with my sister, she likes to get out and walk first thing in the morning. So I go upstairs and with, still with my pajamas, I've just finished my meditation and my yoga. And she's like already in her hiking clothes waiting for me. And I was like, run back downstairs and go, and I'll do it for her. Um, you know, it's not like I can't do it. I just don't mm -hmm. enjoy doing that. And then I'll go out for a really brisk walk with her because that's what she likes to do. Well, look at what we did when we were in Sicily. We walked a lot every single day yeah. and it was lovely, but the weather was amazing. It was ideal. 
It was perfect. I mean, you've been up here in Newfoundland and I've taken Corinne out walking on this signal hill. It's the East Coast Trail. And it's and it's a nice it's a nice hike, let me tell you. And then we had winds pick up of like a hundred and ten kilometers an hour. And honestly, we had our arms like laid out and we were into pushing it. against the wind. You could literally, it's almost, you know, how you do the free fall against somebody. I was free falling against the wind and it was holding me up. Yeah. And it was like that almost every day. The sun is out and the wind was blowing. The The weather was a bit cool, but, uh, you know, it was so good. And that was a brisk walk because we had to get out of there fast, you know, be blown off the hill. But yeah. there's, yeah, it's beautiful. And, it, and it's going to change, you know, you know, you it's going to change through your day, but your morning routine, if you can get that kind of locked in, then it it feels really good. There's something, there's something very ritualistic about a routine that's solid. Like it's, it's almost like it's spiritual, you know, don't you think? It's like, it's your dedication. Yeah. Reverence. Yeah. Yeah. For yourself. I mean, it's like you said, it's like we do stuff throughout the whole day we do stuff for our car we do stuff for our employees or our boss or our clients or our children or our parents or our partner you know for our house for you know Mm -hmm. and we don't do that many things just for ourselves no we don't and those those things we you know when someone says i don't meditate well just learn just learn to sit still for a little bit yeah there's so much free stuff online like even five ten minutes what did somebody said? One of my clients said that some meditation person said that it take it takes 12 minutes for your brain to change to get the benefits in your frontal lobes or whatever. So she was all motivated just to do 12 minutes. And I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, I'd rather you do 20, but you yes. can start with 12, no problem. And some yeah. people start with two or three minutes and that's fine because some brains, um, you know, I do have a couple of clients with ADHD and or with anxiety and starting them off with meditation isn't, but you know, you can do, um, you can do yoga, you can do your walk, you can do, you know, mindfulness walking, like breathing and walking at the same time. Mm -hmm. I give people mindfulness techniques all the time to, to whenever they get it, they go to the bathroom to be aware of going, walking to the bathroom, going to the bathroom or taking a shower, being aware instead of getting lost in thought. You know, mm-hmm. that's, that, that's all different types of sort of types of moving meditations. Mm-hmm. And even, even like this just came into my head. If you're, you get up in the morning and you go into the bathroom and, and you look in the mirror and the first thing you should do is not pick at your face, you know, or go, oh God, you look so tired. You just go, Hey, good morning. We're going for a walk now. Come on. Let's see what we look like when we come back. And when you do, and you come back and your cheeks are pink and you feel good and you're making your breakfast and you're planning the rest of your day. It's like, I don't know when you get that little morning bit in, you start looking forward to it. And then the next day and the next day before you know it, it's routine. It's. And you feel good and you look forward to, to it. You know, that's why I have a morning routine that I enjoy because I just, yeah, I just, I don't love jumping out of bed when I'm groggy and having to do something. I like really approaching the morning in a slow way to, so that I'm fully aware by the time I go downstairs, I'm like, can talk to people. I can take a phone call. I can make my tea, you know, and coherent. And I feel like I'm, I'm fully there and able to greet the world. And I really enjoy that. So finding something that you really enjoy, you know, that you dedicate to yourself is, yeah, it's a wonderful accomplishment. Mm -hmm. It is. I'm even this week and next week doing an 830 pickleball class. So that means I will be up (laughs) earlier. Will you meditate, do yoga and have your coffee and do everything before that? Maybe. I'm going to let you know how that one goes. So (laughs) I may go, I might even go, oh, no, no, but never worked for me in the past. It's still not working for me after 50. I'm going to stick to my later classes, but we'll see. You know, we, we, sometimes it's nice to challenge yourself and, and uh, see what you're capable of. What Eddie's talking around is that she loves her sleep. (laughs) She will take, if she has to be somewhere early, 
and her body doesn't want to wake up at seven to meditate, she will not. No, she won't. She will sleep. Yeah. 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 Because my, I do know that about myself and I've been very fortunate these 60 years of my life that I did not get sleep interrupt us. (laughs) 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 Self-induced. You never had problems sleeping is what you're saying. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Even through menopause, because menopause often interrupts people's sleep, um, you know, or people have people that are waking them up, you know, when they're trying to sleep. And I've, I've, that in, I've had that in my life, too. So, you know, you make the necessary changes, what you need, because if it's important to you, you, you got to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. But I do love my morning stuff. I love being up. Yeah. And see and- you in the morning. How does your routine change on a work day and not a work day? Um, well, on a non-work day, I, I can get more of my exercise things that I like to do in. On my work day, I'm in the office then, you know, usually from 9.30 to 4.30. So um, that changes things things a bit. Yeah, I try and keep up my time that I get up and go to bed. Usually stays about the same, but um, I'll do my my meditation, if I run out of time in the morning, I'll do it between patients. Yeah. In the morning. So I'll, I'll get it in, but I try and keep it all really kind of stacked together now in the morning. Yeah. 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 So maybe that's what's changed. That's what you've tweaked a little bit. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm sure even on a work day that you get. Yes. Yeah. When I, when I have the workout, things to do like on tomorrow's Monday. So there's a 10 o'clock pickleball class. And so I have loads, I don't have to be to work. Right. So when I get up, I'll get my meditation in, um, I'll get my yoga in, I'll get my journaling in, I'll do a little bit of writing, I'll get to my pickleball class. I'll have my breakfast. Like there'll be a lot of journaling and writing before that's part of your, I can do it. I often do a little bit in the morning, but my, yeah, I try and get that whole little stack of things. I call it my 10 to 15 minute things in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you also eat too. Cause I don't do, I make, I make my smoothie and I do my coffee. I might have, you know, my gluten-free bagel or I'll do eggs or, um, but if I'm going to play pickleball, I'm doing a smoothie. Yeah. yeah. So I don't eat like, like food, food, like it's too heavy on my belly. So I'll eat after pickleball, but yeah. I'll have a smoothie or half a smoothie in me. Yeah. 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 Okay. So what about, um, nighttime routines? I think that we can talk a little bit about our nighttime routines. Cause I think nighttime routines are important too, especially cause there are many people that have problems with sleeping mm-hmm. and, what sort of the nighttime routine is. I, um, I like getting my, I actually don't get my jammies on right away. I actually stay dressed until probably an hour before bed. That tells my, my body, one of the things that tells my body I'm winding down. And then probably within a half an hour of going to bed, I will wash my face and take out my contact lenses and put all the fun things on my face and stuff Mm -hmm. like that. Then my body, those things tells my body that I'm getting ready for bed. Mm -hmm. Then I'll come back and I might watch a few more minutes of a show or I'll shut it down and I'll put on, you know, audible. Um, Yeah. Yeah. And then I, mine, mine is pretty similar, except um, I'm about the same. I'll, I'll put on my, um, PJ bottoms about an hour before I had to, to, to watch, we watch a, a Netflix series or a movie or a show. But before we even do that, we'll play, Strat and I will play my honey. We'll play a game of cards or Scrabble or gin rummy, or, you know, like we're not on the phone kind of people. Cause I know that a lot of people catch up and they talk and they're on the phone because I think I'm talking all day. So in the evening, it's kind of like, we really, we, We go for our walk when I get home and then we have supper. And then I just, um, yeah, the winding down, the sleep hygiene bit, it's just knowing. And and if we're, 
up, like say it's going into Saturday or Sunday and it's 1030, my head automatically starts like, okay, I'm like, I'm getting really tired now. And if I went in and laid down in the bed, I would go out to sleep. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> that's what happens to me. And uh, yeah. So, and Strats, he, he's able to stay up a little later. So, yeah. So that's what happens. You know, you you get your routine going, brush our teeth, do, wash our face. We know the body's knowing it's winding down. The lights are dimmer. We don't have bright lights on. Um, yeah. 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 It's, it's, if it's, I ever had a night, sorry, when, if I ever had a night when I, you know, was, you know, restless or whatever, I'd take a nice bath, Epsom salt, lavender bath, but... Yeah. Yeah. That's nice. Nice practice too. I remember our friend, Jamie, she won't mind if I share this, but mm -hmm. one of her first silent retreats that she did um, with me in, in Tazewell, Tennessee, she said to me after we came out of silent, she's like, so, so I went to go to bed because on, on silent retreats, you're not supposed to read or write or definitely not have your phone on. And um, so she was getting ready for bed and it was so odd. She was used to being on her phone before she went to bed. So she's thought to herself, she shared this with me. She's like, so do I just like get in bed and turn off the light and my body will go to sleep? Like she had no <laughs> idea that that's what would happen. And that's a great awareness to have yeah. when you're on a silent retreat and there's no TV, there's no phone, there's no cellular service and you don't have a book because you're not supposed to bring a book. Mm -hmm. Um, what do you, you know, you do before bed and yeah. how does that feel? You know, yeah, just because that's great. one of the things about a silent retreat is what he, well, it might not feel great for some people, right? They might yeah. feel very uncomfortable or lay in bed, twiddling their thumbs for a while. I don't sleep much on retreat. So, I mean, I'm not a big sleeper anyway, but, um, but definitely on retreat, I don't sleep a lot. And, and, but I'm fine with shutting off the light and, and just laying for a couple hours, like that's not a problem for me as I've done it my whole life. Yeah. So if I wait around too long, like I'll get up and I'll, I'll do some writing or something like that. Like I've actually written my, my first book. I wrote that, that when I couldn't sleep, I wrote it at like between 2 AM and 4 AM over a couple of week period. My manifestation handbook was written in the middle. Oh, yeah. of that. A lot of my yeah. songs that I used to write were in the middle of the night. And um, so we all have different habits. Like that would never work for Eddie at all. But I want to give people permission to like whatever feels natural for you, not because then I met another woman recently who I could tell was very out of balance and she doesn't sleep much, but I can tell because I think she's ADHD, but also she's very Vata imbalanced and mm -hmm. she then is scrolling and activating her mind all night. I actually do lay in bed for a couple of hours and if I'm still wide awake at 2 8 or 3 a.m., that's when I'll get up and do some things. And then I wasn't tired in the morning too. When that happens to me, I can still function. Eddie's seen it because there was a couple of nights in Sicily when I was awake all night and I could still function in the day. It's not, not a problem. It's just my, my mother, you know, needs five or six hours of sleep. My sister needs five or six hours of sleep. My great grandmother, my grandmother, it sort of, it runs in our family. So. Yeah. I'm like my mother. She, she sleeps well, always have slept well. She's 88 and yeah, she, it's amazing. She can just go in and go to bed, go to sleep, sleep solid. Yeah, it's 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 a gift because there's a lot of people out there that, you know, the brain that turnover that that where it just clicks over, you know, is is challenging for a lot of people. And, and that's uh, not why I don't sleep, though. Oh, I know. Not for you, but for a lot of people, For a lot of people. It that's is. why meditation for, is so important. The thinking, huh? Yeah, the yeah. thinking mind is yeah. is. Yeah, but for you, no, 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 I know your reasons are not that. Yeah, I'm not, people were like, you didn't sleep. Well, were you thinking? I'm like, no, no, why would I think at nighttime? Yeah, yeah. You're like, I, my my brain doesn't need it. Yeah, it doesn't yeah. need it. It's interesting. I always think sleep is like a cleanup, you know, it's like, a, it's a really beautiful rest. Yeah. Yeah. Our bodies need it. You know, the body definitely needs some sleep. Everybody's different. Some people need more sleep than others. And, um, and it is a requirement for the body. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think about it sometimes. And I think if we were like aliens from another planet or, you know, and see what these human bodies do, 
it's kind of weird when you really think about it. Like we have, we require sleep, we require a certain amount of nutrition and just all the things that the body, you know, kind of like a car will need maintenance. Yeah. You know, the body needs this yes. maintenance too. It does. It really does. Because yeah. This body and this mind is how we view the world, how we see the world and how the body feels can really affect your perspective on life. It, it doesn't, you know, I think that's part of the spiritual practice is even if you're uncomfortable and your body's not being okay to, to, to not, you know, go too far into it, but it is challenging. No doubt when people are in pain or, you know, have, it is something to get over. Like it's hard to be positive about life when you're in pain or, or challenged with your body. It's true. Yeah. True. So take care of it as best you can. Some things we don't have control over, we get sick or an illness or whatever like that. But the things we do have control over getting good sleep, waking up with a good plan and going to bed, you know, mm -hmm. on time and, um, and having a routine that works for you. For work that works for you. This is your body. This is your body. This is the one you get. So you have to take care of it, rest it, exercise it, move it, feed it good food. Mm -hmm. Give it the brain a rest in meditation, not just in sleep. Yes. You can, or get there's out. lots of guided meditations online too and short ones. Mm -hmm. Take a little brisk walk, get out in nature. Have some gratitude journaling going on. Try some, you know, projects if you want them and move through them a little bit at a time. It doesn't have to be a rush, but just get a little routine going. Yeah. And share with us if we haven't mentioned what your morning routine is, you can always, you know, send us a message and let us know um, what it is. Because I'd like to know about different morning routines too. I'm sure there's a lot of different morning routines. <laughs> <laughs> Other than meditation and yoga, how could that be? <laughs> I'm sure there's a lot. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot. <laughs> we'll <Yes>. be hearing <laughs> new routines. <laughs> hey, we might even add them to what we're doing already. Maybe, you never know. We've got to be flexible in life. Oh, yes. I love learning. I love learning. I learn every day. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks, Ed. That was fun. It was fun. I think Thank we'll you. actually publish this one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. All right. We'll see you next time. Till next time.